to the Lori Love Show. It's the fifth episode, and I have Jade here, also known as RX Mary Jade. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm really excited to have her. We're going to talk about some really interesting topics that you guys either are familiar with or are very unfamiliar with, which is um, the uses and benefits of CBD and also cannabis. Correct, correct. So I met um, Jade about a year ago at a CBD yoga event where she had um, numerous products there that I tried and I took some home with me and those products helped me with um, anxiety and also joint pain because um, I get like leg pain and stuff like that when it's raining. Mm -hmm. Um, it also helps me with that. I forgot to, we, this is, we had to re-record this episode. Um, and I forgot to mention that before. Um, and so tell me a little bit about, so I met you a year ago and since then till now, I have seen you speaking at numerous events, Mm -hmm. bringing awareness. Um, and for those of you who don't know what CBD is. I think that Jade, you can probably explain it better than I. Yeah, um, CBD is the uh, the the new craze. So it's the non euphoric portion of cannabis. So that's the part that's going to help with uh, seizures, uh, inflammation. It can help with certain skin conditions, and it doesn't get you high. It actually can regulate any uh, effects of THC. Um, it became really popular a few, well, I would say, I think I said like six or seven years ago. Uh, and once people started noticing the medicinal properties that it was decreasing seizures in children, that's when it really kind of took the limelight and people started really, uh, paying attention to it and and applying it to different, um, ailments and seeing that CBD can help a variety of conditions, especially like anxiety. Um, it can help with depression, help with fatigue. Uh, all sorts of conditions Mm -hmm. Um, and you can use it topically so in the creams and uh, that sort and also patches Um, you can like vaporize it so even in those like vape pens as well Um, you can buy a smokable cbd flower it it looks like the regular stuff but um, it's actual like cbd only oh like it looks like a thc pen. okay yeah yeah Mm -hmm. but it's uh it's cbd only um, and then there's also this, the most common is the tincture. So that's the, the oil, the drops that everybody puts underneath their tongue. You hold it there for a little while. And that really, really helps, um, just overall well being. but it really can help with anxiety and, uh, any type of like chronic inflammation you have in your body as well. Yeah, absolutely. That day that I did the, um, the yoga event, they, they were distributing the CBD tincture and after i tried it i just felt so relaxed Mm -hmm. and my body felt like very fluid like it felt like more like not as tense Mm -hmm. i felt like no pain um because i had also been in some car accidents and so i had like back pain and i had anxiety for driving and things like that and the cbd kind of helped me stay calm and at ease and also not feel so much pain in my joints Mm -hmm. Um, and you also make a product, right? With CBD in it as like a solve. Yeah. So I make a, it's called Shaman Sav. And so it's a 60 milligram, uh, CBD topical. Uh, I have people, I started making it really just, you know, for pain relief Mm -hmm. in my hands and my feet. Um, and then I sold it at a party once and uh, somebody had brought it down to Delaware and then they told me that they were having uh they were using it on their kids and whenever they would get a bump or bruise or scrape or a scar and that it was the only thing that took it took the ouchies away oh, <laughs> that's what they told right. me so once i realized that people like and it is it's a very low dosage of cbd because that's the thing with cbd is like we we really always are like oh more is better and it's like no you don't know your therapeutic dosage that's why i like to keep uh the dosages in my products low because it's just enough you get just enough CBD. You don't have to oversaturate your system Mm -hmm. um, with it either. Um, So the jar is, you know, it can last for up to six months depending on how you use it, but people use it for uh, all sorts of things, for bruises, scrapes, scars, burns, foot pain, back pain. Like it relieves the pain on a a burn or the pain um, like? 
Well, it, it, it more so um, for like the burns, it would be the CBD would actually be uh, regenerating the skin cells and decreasing the inflammation. Okay. So it wouldn't necessarily help with the actual um, pain. Mm -hmm. um, it could a little bit, but I think that at that level, it's more so about the tissue regeneration and like making sure that you're you're healing appropriately, just in case like you're somebody maybe who heals slow or anything like that. Oh, okay, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. How can somebody who's interested in getting your product, how can they get their hands on it? Let's say somebody, because I know you also do like massages with the product too, right? Um, yes, yeah, so I have it. So RX Mary Jade is the CBD education cannabis consulting uh, side of my company. Um, I do. I've been a massage therapist for 12, 13 years now. Um, so that's, you know, you may have seen me at events doing chair massage and everything. It was more just to spread the awareness of uh, CBD. Uh, but I do offer my topical as part of my massage services. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it. Some people take to it, some people don't. It's not something that uh, encompasses my whole massage practice. Mm -hmm. uh, the RX Mary Jade, this education side is, this is the majority of what I do. Um, the education, the the get making sure people have access to the safe products. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you don't have access to the right CBD, that or the right cannabis or the, you know know how to get your card or whatever it may be if you just leave are left with a sour taste in your mouth you might be missing out on an opportunity yeah so i really want to make sure that people um can have all the the right opportunities and let's that, talk about know. that somebody who's interested in trying cbd but doesn't know which product to use um what brand is legit or you know where they can get a uh, you know because i'm hearing that there, are, I know that you bring awareness to this. I've seen you talk about it where there's some CBD that is made like maybe in an unsafe manner or isn't like the best quality. Mm -hmm. So how can someone kind of like navigate between that? Um, well, my first piece of advice is don't buy your CBD off of Amazon. I know they recently started allowing people to buy CBD products, but uh, let me tell you this, anybody can start anything and start it as a business on Amazon. So they could just be getting any type of oil, putting hemp oil on it and selling it to you under the guise that is hemp oil. It could be just hemp seed oil. Mm. Um, I do have my website, rxmaryjade.com on there. I have a shop section so you could access my products um, as well as a scroll down tab where it has my recommended products. So it'll have uh, tinctures, essential oil brands, different types of products. Um, it can, it'll also bring you to, um, you know, products that you can find on Amazon that would be safe. So I do try to offer people like a variety of options. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just always best to, you know, make sure that the company has some type of lab test results, make sure it has a COA, a certificate of authenticity, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that it's an actual brand mm -hmm. uh, that you can, you can, if you can type it in online and find it, then okay, you're in the right uh path i've seen some cbd labels where it they literally haven't even put a name like it had no name it just wrote cbd oil 500 mm -hmm. milligrams yeah like, i've seen that yeah. online and you're just like what is this okay yeah. where did it come from like mm -hmm. how was it made um it's always it sh it should most always be co2 extracted uh because once you are applying heat to the plant material it's going to degrade some of the cannabinoids so if you're using co2 extraction it's not going to degrade the cannabinoids um, I can't really speak too much on the actual, like, sometimes there are people who are like, oh, well, mine's clear or mine's like a green color, like color wise. If it's a clear, it's probably an isolate product, which just means it, it contains zero traces of THC. It's just the CBD molecules isolated um, versus like the greenish color looking ones where that's like a full spectrum product. And it technically does have THC in it, not a psychoactive amount of THC, but um, that, that 0.3% uh, percent of THC, so that's like below the the legal guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually your best bet because it allows the full spectrum to to work in your body and really help um, fight any inflammation. But um, those are just it's it, that's why it's a little hard to navigate. Like mm -hmm. all of that was a lot of information. That's why I put stuff on my website. That's why I ask people. You know, you can always send me pictures of stuff. Um, or just say, you know, I have this brand. I don't mind if people send me an email real quick and um, ask about certain products because, you know, God forbid you're taking something that is just like 
a chemical of some sort or you don't know and you're not feeling well and that's mm-hmm. happened to people i know people who've had adverse reactions had allergic reactions to it so mm-hmm. it's it's good to know uh your source or have somebody looking yeah. out for you and for those who don't um who may not be familiar with the term psychoactive when it comes to cbd and thc um can you explain what that means to where like the CBD doesn't have the psychoactive aspect to it like THC would? Okay. Uh, that's the phrase that I'm trying to correct is the, <laughs> the psychoactive. So CBD is psychoactive. It's non-euphoric. Okay. It's non-euphoric. Yeah, non-euphoric, okay. non-intoxicating. Okay. Yeah. So CBD, it, if it's clearing your mind, it's still acting on the mind. Okay. And when... Um, that, that's why people were saying, oh, it's non-psychoactive because they uh, were relating mm-hmm. euphoria to psychoactivity. They are misusing the term. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because there's a euphoria when, when it comes to THC. Yes. Um, where you kind of feel maybe a little... You feel happy. Yeah. And well, that's the thing. And they call it high. Yeah. But it's no different. <laughs> if they give you Zoloft and you feel that way, it means that you're not depressed anymore. Right. But if you take cannabis, that means you're high. Right. You know, it's all stigma. It's all stigma. But it that's is. the thing. It's it's THC. Um, you know, if you do it in excess, yeah, you're going to be extra. Yeah. Um, but it's no different than if you took extra medicine. You just have. It's true. It's just a side effect of the, it's true. the medicine. That's all. Yeah. Which is um, which is why I think it's awesome that we have like the medical marijuana dispensaries here now and things like that, because now those people who actually have a medical condition can get it without having to get arrested and getting locked up and like paying fines and things like that. And Mm -hmm. that brings me to ask you, because I know that your passion for CBD and cannabis comes from a very personal place and that you've lived to see the benefits of it for yourself. So Mm -hmm. what can you tell us what it was that drove you to become an advocate or um, an educator of this topic? Um, Yeah, so I had always used the cannabis Um, since I was in my teens. I stopped using it because I wanted to lose a lot of weight. Uh, I lost 180 pounds. I started having just like crazy um, health issues, tremors, uh, gastro issues, all sorts of things. Parents would have to come and get me. I lived in New York. I had to drive um, from New Jersey, come get me, bring me to the emergency room, everything. Um, I started incorporating cannabis back in just specifically for the stomach issues. And that significantly helped. That was like a life changer. Um, and then I heard about CBD because I was still having anxiety as somebody who had taken Xanax for a large portion of their life. Um, and also for my tremors. And I tried CBD. I tried Charlotte's Web, which is a strain of um, it, it made by the Stanley Brothers originally for a little girl named Charlotte, mm-hmm. whose seizures it helped. And um, that that instantly I hadn't taken a Xanax now in five years mm-hmm. because of that. Um, when That's I went, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> on that journey. Yeah, that was not easy. It was like trial and error. Yeah, 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 and it's you know that's the thing also with Xanax is if you take it or you stop taking it, it causes you to have more anxiety. So it's like this, you're you're stuck. It's a trap. It really is a trap. Um, but I was glad that I went to Denver and I tried a Mary's Medicinal uh, THC to CBD one to one ratio patch transdermal patch and I wasn't walking for more than five to ten minutes at that time and when I used the patch I walked five miles that day um, and I came back to New Jersey I was like I'm doing this I don't have to move to Colorado for you know medical marijuana um, you know I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this here um, I'm gonna work at the dispensary I'm gonna get all this inf- you know knowledge and so I got a job at Breakwater Dispensary and they let me know like you know fibromyalgia is a qualifying condition and I just like oh, I don't have to move I can, mm-hmm. I can stay here. So I wanted to really like help the patients. I got to work in the front end of the dispensary, work directly with the patients, but I just saw the gaps that um, that were there. And I, I saw that I needed to do more for the people that I could do when I was, you know, working for someone else. And, you know, to take those, those risks or, or, you know, go out of my way for people to make sure that they understand the medicine, how they're using it appropriately, they're getting safe medicine, you know, whatever it is that they may need in regards to like having this holistic uh, lifestyle change uh, that I can help provide for them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this is how I learned through my pain. 
I that's that's my knowledge is through my pain. Like I know about pathology and neurology and things like that because I do medical massage therapy. Um, but <laughs> this pain has taught me so much and it's taught me um, how to teach people. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm here for. Is and just... it's like drove you to look for answers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's awesome. Like that's why I could never, I never forgot when I met you, I was like, I just, you know, before I even had the show, I just always would see that you were really out there advocating and bringing clarity towards the benefits of this, because it is important that we look for natural remedies and that we know that we have other options other than um, Xanax or other than certain pills that have other side effects and things like that. Um, And... Somebody, let's say somebody who is interested in getting a medical marijuana card. Mm-hmm. How, how, what's that process like? Um, it's a lot easier now than it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, because now anxiety uh, and as well as uh, several different kinds of chronic pain are on there. Uh, so now more people qualify for their card versus before people just assumed you had a terminal illness or some type of uh, extremely debilitating condition where you're homebound or, you know, you're you're about to, you know, pass or pass away or anything like that, you know, thinking mm-hmm. it's super terminal. Um, but now it's it's more it's the, the program is lightening up. So as long as you have a diagnosis um, of one of the qualifying conditions, um, it's. Usually I, I separate them between types of uh, muscle pain, um, anxiety disorder, so anxiety itself, as well as PTSD is now on there. So that's great for veterans, um, as well as many other individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, people with Tourette's and that kind of thing as well are on there. MS, it, the, the list goes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a lot more qualifying conditions. You just need to find a doctor on the registry, or you could try to ask your uh, physician if they want to join the registry. It's just a form that they have to fill out. It's just about some doctors don't want to participate. Um, so once you find that if your doctor wants to participate or you find a, a doctor off of the registry, which is available on the New Jersey State site, I also do have uh, that on my website as well. Okay, great. Um, so people can look up uh, a physician that's either by, you know, the type of condition that they have or just location. Sometimes location is just a the driving factor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have to have a bona fide relationship with the physician. Uh, and that's really up to them. If you have like a long standing history and you come with tons of medical records, they can decide within that first visit that they, they have a patient, uh, doctor, patient, physician, patient, you know, uh, relationship plan. Mm-hmm. Um, some doctors are going to require three or four visits. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just depends. It depends mm-hmm. on who you go to, what your condition is and mm-hmm. how, how they decide to handle the program. Mm-hmm. But from there, the card uh, fee used to be $200. Uh, now it's 100 um, Seniors, as well as those on government assistance, and I believe veterans, uh, they get their cards now for $20. So that's like a- That's sim- great. Yeah, right? Absolutely. I, and it's, it's easy. It takes about a month's time to get your card, a little bit less, and sign up for your dispensary, and you're, you're good to go. It's, that's awesome. Yeah. And you working at the dispensary, I'm sure, helped you also better understand what people need as far as guidance when it comes to, because we were talking about this um, off the cameras, that there's different strains. And Mm -hmm. so sometimes someone might think like, you know, they have a problem for, let's say, I don't know, let's say they have pain or they have stress or what have you, and they get a certain strain and it's not the right strain for them. So. Mm -hmm. How did that experience in the dispensary kind of affect the way that you're able to, like, what did you learn from working there that you think has helped you the most from that experience? Don't ever assume that people know. Just because this has been around forever, these are legitimately uh, sick people or, you know, people that are experiencing debilitating conditions um, that need your help. And... They just because you you may know or we 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 think you have an idea of something. Don't ever assume that they know. Mm-hmm. Always ask about other medicines they're taking and ask specifics about what type of stress are you feeling, what type of anxiety are you feeling, what time of day are you feeling it at? Because I could tell you that um, I'm I'm anxious, and you say, oh okay, she needs an indica, she needs to calm down, she needs something purple. But if I'm anxious in the morning because I have to go to work. 
that is not the time for me to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's about, okay, well, maybe she needs a CBD strain yeah. mm -hmm. and she needs to balance it. Well, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's a, a trial and error. And then to have to, um, it's also a lot of damage control too, because New Jersey is not a cheap program. Like eighths in New Jersey are anywhere from 60 to $70. For medical marijuana. For medical marijuana. You can go to uh, out west and it's probably 30 to $40. And the quality is way better. Mm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, the East Coast is coming up. Uh, but in regards to the medical program that I'm seeing here, that's mm -hmm. what I'm referring to. I just yeah. I have a lot of friends who are growers. That's like <laughs> heavy inflation. Yeah. And I guess the licensing and probably the tax and then all the fees they have to pay to have those dispensaries is probably why they implement that higher price yeah it's also it's because it's a business it's yeah. also a business you know these are all uh privately owned companies right so they have their like they do have patient interest in mind but they also do have yeah their interest in mind yeah so it's and so if someone has a medical marijuana card in new jersey mm -hmm. can they buy medical marijuana from dispensaries out of state or is that like illegal it, it depends where you go. Uh, some states do have uh, laws in place that they will accept your medical card. Um, some places are just recreational. So, you know, if you have your card there, it's, it means nothing. Um, you can smoke without, without a card. card. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, places like Rhode Island, I believe they accept. Uh, Rhode Island and D.C. accept New Jersey patients. Uh, Maine is recreational or and if they do accept a New Jersey patient you would have to already have the paperwork filled out prior to you going there mm -hmm. um, proving why you would need their medical marijuana mm. so it's not like it, it it's it's not it doesn't cross over mm -hmm. and just because and that's a, that was another question we get at the dispensary all the time the phone would be ringing off I'm in from Cali I'm just want to come into the dispensary and like nope New Jersey mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. and even people from New York coming here that have new their New York cards thinking, oh, well, I'm okay. I'm like, no, if you get a cool cop, you're okay. Right. <laughs> but that's not legal. Okay. <laughs> so if you have a medical marijuana card in New Jersey and you're driving out of state with marijuana, medical marijuana on you, you can still get fined. You oh. can still. Oh, yeah. That's, okay. You can, it, everything is, it's in the state. As soon as you are crossing, mm -hmm. I, I, that's one thing that I really have to explain to patients too, is like, it, it doesn't, it, it protects you in the state. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily protect you everywhere in the state. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a federal property in the state, mm -hmm. that's still federal property. That's federal mm -hmm. rules. That's federal law. So federally, this is still illegal. So okay. that could be a problem. But and Another thing that we talked about was that um, some of the CBD that's out there is not the best CBD for you. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I know that on your website, you have links to the CBD companies that you recommend because you've tried it yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's awesome because like um, prior to meeting you, if I would have just found out about CBD, um, I wouldn't have even known that there's some CBD out there that's not real or legit. I wanted to ask you that if somebody can't, you know, partake in THC usage and they they still want that like easing, calming effect of CBD, does it show up on their blood test? So you're saying that they would need a CBD that is isolate? Yes, isolate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it literally means like isolate, isolated. Okay. So that's the easiest way to remember it. Like if you're ever in um, a store or anything like that. So if it says full spectrum, that means it has all the cannabinoids in it. Um, then there's broad spectrum, which I'm a little iffy about. So broad spectrum is basically full spectrum, but then they do it through another process to remove the THC. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> it just seems like a lot of handling of the product right um versus the whole the whole plan is always best so i don't think that removing the thc really does much of a difference but cbd on its own does have medicinal value mm -hmm. um so if you're somebody who definitely you know you're worried about that like teacher or some type of service provider or anything like that mm -hmm. then isolate products would be the isolate best isolate cbd yeah. and then is there isolate cbd 
No, that was a trick question. Because I was going to say, is there isolate CBD, broad spectrum and all that? But we just clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of information. Yeah, I know. I know. Is. Exactly. Are there different strains of CBD? So th- that's the thing. That's that's <sighs> Companies usually are not going to tell you what is in their CBD. So if you're using a CBD product and you're like, okay, this doesn't work for me at all. It might be the strain. Mm -hmm. It's no different than somebody getting, you know, purple um, haze or something like that. Right. And then like fruity pebbles and Uh it's, it's, they feel totally different. Those are two strains of cannabis, if Mm -hmm. you don't know, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And it's, it's, it might be two totally different feelings for them. But if you're just calling it THC, like they're not going to know like, oh, well, no, because there's there's large profiles that the the terpene profiles, there's other phytonutrients and cannabinoids in the plant that your body might actually respond well to or Mm -hmm. adversely to. You might be allergic to a certain Mm -hmm. strain. I know that there's some cannabis that I'm actually allergic to. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people don't know that because we just, you know, it's always just been weed. It's always just been pot. It's just been one thing and it's not. It's a, a cornucopia of different plants yeah i have a friend who um like there's a certain strain that will make his face break out in like hives right away Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh wow you can be allergic to a certain strain you know what i mean um so, so when it comes to cbd do you think they make cbd out of like indica or sativa or it just doesn't matter um i'm i'm thinking that it, it, it's really depending because there's certain brands that makes well CBD in general is usually sativa. Okay. Um, but there can be indica CBDs. Okay. Which sativa for those of you who don't know, um, is more of a like, Oh, it's an upper. Yeah. It's an upper kind of Saturday. Okay. Party. Okay. Got it. <laughs> So indica is the more relaxing in one. Indica couch. And oh, okay, that's how we can remember <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I like teaching. In the couch. <laughs> I like that. And that's why that's why some CBD like you, you were even saying like I don't want to be drowsy like from some CBD, but there's one company that I recommend is Supportive Naturals. Mm-hmm. They have lemonine, lemonine which is uh the terpene that gives a lemon scent. Mhm. Um that gives me energy. Mm-hmm. And I got a little worried when I was going to first take it because I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to take this and I have a panic attack. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. I was like, oh, I have no fatigue. I'm good. I'm clear. I'm going through my day. And then at night, I was taking my other product, my core roots, and that like brings me down. Like It centers me even so that I can relax. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, this is perfect. Because I mean, like, I know what strain that is, but like, I don't know what strain the supportive naturals is or whatever like that specifically, but it's just important to try mm-hmm. the different because you have to know that they're all different strains mm-hmm. unless it's a, a, just a company that's white labeling, mm-hmm. um, which might be hard to discern, which just means that they're putting their own label on um, another brand of CBD. So mm-hmm. that okay. would be something to look out for. I think it's I think one thing is that um, there's so many people who, you know, use cannabis, who smoke, who smoke weed. And they do it because they don't they don't want to take um, depression medications. Mm-hmm. They don't want to go to um, you know a psychiatrist and be diagnosed with like Xanax and things like that. And they feel that it calms them, or they have insomnia and they can't sleep at night. Oh. So the marijuana helps them go to sleep. Um, and there's a lot of people who do want to quit smoking. Um, either because drug test wise or because of um, the time that it consumes, you know, like getting the product, rolling the product, smoking it. And uh, let's say if you can't smoke in your house and you have to go outside now, your risk, you're taking risks, mm-hmm. um, legal risks. And so I think that CBD product is a nice um, transition over especially now that you mentioned that you know you know these cbd products that you can take in the morning Mm -hmm. for anxiety that will not make you drowsy and then you also know the cbd product that you can take at night which helps you wind down Mm -hmm. and that's something that's as easy as just putting it under your tongue right Mm -hmm. so there's no travel there's no legal worries there's no it's just very easy and simple and I'm sure that it'll still bring a similar effect mm-hmm. 
besides the actual just like the habit that that some of us have which is just like being used to just like rolling and smoking yeah 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 um and it's also you know also with the cbd is that you can vape it there's so there's the the vaping okay option so even if that is just a habit like you're somebody not even just sm you want to stop smoking cannabis but mm -hmm. like if you're even trying to stop smoking cigarettes mm -hmm. uh there's a company plain jane that mm. like it's almost like i didn't particularly like it because i'm not a cigarette smoker but it was a similar thing so if you're somebody who's like okay i need to stop smoking tobacco cigarettes you can use something like that. And then it's also giving you the benefit of the anti-anxiety, everything like that. You're getting all the health benefits still too. Mm -hmm. um, and then also maybe it's at nighttime and you want to have a little snack before you go to bed. You can always have a chocolate bar or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the great part about, about CBD too because that's so nice and relaxing and you know that, okay, you know, an hour and a half before bedtime, I'm going to have, you know, you're just watching whatever TV show, eating your little snack and... Next thing you know, you're sleeping mm -hmm. soundly, you know, mm -hmm. and that's 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 it is it's an it is a nice transition for people who don't necessarily you don't not everybody needs euphoria. Not everybody needs that. You know, mm -hmm. it's nice. And I think that also using CBD more regularly and using THC products less, it still gives you the ability to use your cannabis recreationally, mm -hmm. because just because I'm a medical patient doesn't mean I don't like to have fun and us as humans we get so hung up on this black and white like if you use it recreationally you can't use it medically mm -hmm. if you do this you can't do that and i'm sorry but just because i have chronic pain doesn't mean i'm not allowed to enjoy myself and have fun mm -hmm. and i know the difference and that's that's also the point of cbd i feel um is you have to learn to know the difference between when you're abusing and when you're using mm -hmm. so if you're using this as medicine you know when you're using it as medicine and when you're abusing it then you're abusing it and you need to call yourself on it. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I feel like the CBD is a real good starting point for a lot of people, um, kind of keep you in check. Mm -hmm. So you're not just escaping from your problems. Mm -hmm. um, you're addressing them. You're present. You're here. Mm -hmm. You're doing your thing. You're alert. You know? Yeah, which is an interesting topic that you talk about because there is a stigma towards um, cannabis and, and cannabis users and those who smoke either recreationally or are seen to be smoking recreationally but actually find that they do have benefits from smoking that eases their anxieties and their worries and that stigma is that people who smoke weed are lazy or do not accomplish as much or use it as a way to avoid their problems and you're right we do have to um those who use this product do have to make sure that they call themselves out and that they keep themselves in check and that they don't make it something that's taking away from their goals and the things that they need to get mm -hmm. done throughout the day, which I think that line can get blurry um, depending on either the level of stress that you have and how much marijuana you're consuming to overcome that stress. And mm -hmm. I also have been able to realize that Sometimes we look at um, certain products as something that is going to help us. But then if we overuse it, now it's hurting us mm -hmm. because now we're not fixing the situation that's causing that stress and we're just covering it up. Yeah. So I think that's also good that you mentioned that because, you know, these products are there. They are from the earth. They are here to help us. But we also have to put our we have to also have to put our part in in, you know, minimizing those situations that cause us stress and not putting ourselves in those places or around those people that cause us stress or not giving them that power mm -hmm. to affect us that way. So, I mean, there's so many things involved in life that um, can give us reasons to look for natural health solutions like THC and CBD, but it's also a matter of like CBD is not going to, let's say that you have like this, this is just an example, right? So let's say that you look towards CBD for anxiety and let's say it's you have anxiety because you have either, you know, you're either in school and you're not studying enough. So you're worried that you're not going to pass your test. So now you're stressing out, like you need to study more. So, you know, and that will help too. But it is. I'm glad that you mentioned that because there's a very thin line between using and abusing and where it can help you and where it can hurt you mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
and you you can even do that with um you know uh, not just saying teach you can do that with cbd products like we're saying it's making you drowsy like mm-hmm. you can do that same thing oh i just you know i don't want to study for my test i'm going to eat the cbd bar and mm-hmm. it's about you really do you have to call yourself it's about taking accountability for yourself because mm-hmm. for so long people just oh that other person made me mad or the doctor told me i need to do this no mm-hmm. What do you need to do? Mm -hmm. What did you allow to happen? Mm -hmm. How are you going to respond? How Mm -hmm. are you going to do better? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that it with everything, Mm -hmm. exercise, food, yeah, (laughs) everything. Mm -hmm. We're we're, we're all learning to be more mindful and Mm -hmm. accountable for our, you know, our actions and what we put in our bodies and and how we're actually um, part of this equation, how we're part of this world, our world Mm -hmm. too, like what we are to ourselves and how we care for ourselves allows us you know is what creates this experience in this mm-hmm. world so mm-hmm. you really just have to like keep keep yourself in check like mm-hmm. be real with yourself if you're lying to yourself you're the one you're lying to so mm-hmm. it's the, you're just hurting you yeah <laughs> and i think sometimes if you're i think if you're abusing um if you're overly looking towards um outside solutions you won't really be able to see that what you need to work on within yourself too. Mm-hmm. So if you like, for example, when I found CBD, I mean, I, I had the candies and I had, um, I had like this butter thing and I had a friend who gave me like this THC butter and I was just like throwing it in all day. Like <laughs> I was just like breakfast, I was putting the butter in my eggs. And then like after breakfast, I was having the CBD candy and then like, And then it was like I was doing too much, Mm -hmm. you know, when really what I needed to do was implement better practices in the day to day so that I wouldn't be feeling such high levels of stress. That's important, too. Um, And I wanted to go back to those who may have watched this episode, but still have more questions, still be interested in what you're doing. And I wanted to talk about what you have coming up up in the future because i know you're working on a couple things right now Mm -hmm. so can you tell us a little bit of what we can expect from i know a lot of people that are going to see this they're going to start following you and i just want to enlighten them a little bit about what you're working on and and what you have coming out um sure so i'm working on a a line of products uh that should be coming out in i want to say a few months Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully sooner than that uh, so that will be a great way for people to kind of ease themselves or ease others into uh, CBD products, you know, just an alternative uh, way to deal with pain. Um, also, more classes I do want to offer. Like uh, back in January, I did an infusion class where everybody got a quarter of CBD hemp flower. I served a CBD dinner. Um, And I did a live demonstration, multiple method demonstration with a magical butter machine. I did uh, with a saucepan. I did a crock pot and I showed everybody with different types of oils and butters how to make your own uh, CBD edibles, basically. Or you can make a topical from the oils. That sounds amazing. I wish I was there. I actually wanted to go, but I had work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so sad. It was a great like that was a great, great uh, class. And I really I want to do that again um, soon. So looking for places that are cannabis friendly that, uh, you know, I mean, it's just CBD flower that I do everything. So everything is completely legal. It's completely safe. And everybody goes home with a safe, clean product so that they can try CBD for themselves. Um, And then also, you know, just using mind body uh, practices. So Mm -hmm. my the last event that I threw um, was back at the end of March. Mm -hmm. It was a sound healing, Reiki, uh, aromatherapy, herbalism lesson. So all sorts of different types of healing. So that's why I want people to really embrace, you know, alternative medicine as well as cannabis. And and there's a lot of people in the alternative medicine community that mm-hmm. still see cannabis as an escape. And there's a lot of people in cannabis that don't want anything to do with Reiki or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But these are all methods that can be used together to kind of help you have a better lifestyle, kind of bring you back to, you know, your center Uh, and keep you going like help you deal with your pain better whether it be physical or mental Mm -hmm. pain that you're going through Um, so those are the types of things that I have coming so going forward there's going to be lots of workshops and that's awesome Mm -hmm. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about Reiki because I know that there are people who are interested in it and who are interested in different ways of healing and feeling better, but they're not very aware of what that is. And I've met a few people, ironically, this month who have told me that they have tried Reiki, they have tried sound healing, and it's helped them in a major way. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of like what kind of practice is that? What does it involve, really? Um, well, Reiki would be uh, energetic. Uh, technique so it is something that's done with it's called it basically means the laying down of hands so you can either have your hands on the person or off of the person and you're just really you're the conduit for the energy uh, the universal energy through you um, to allow healing to be received by the individual um, me particularly like I was trained in Reiki but I'm a, a chi healer so I deal with it more on uh, the level of dealing with chi imbalances which is also similar to you know the energy it just is like your lifeblood through you so it's still also um, energetic work that's done you know you have to practice for it um, I feel like Reiki is a, um, something that it it's offered at a lot of hospitals mm -hmm. um, I believe 88 out of like 125 hospitals offer Reiki Wow. As, as one of their services so that is something that is actually being um, proven to be beneficial and whether it be just placebo placebo still does something what's so, placebo for plac those who don't know uh so placebo would be just basically like taking a sugar pill pill so it's the, okay yeah the placebo the effect. Act, exactly mm -hmm. so placebo still works mm -hmm. just because you know we don't have the tools to measure it and they are trying to come up with things to um you know explain and, and quantify how these energetic practices work mm -hmm. whether or not it's you actually relaxing or or what m may it be like the energy is actually you know working and moving mm -hmm. you know to me it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you're receiving healing somehow you're receiving healing mm -hmm. um so that and sound healing is pretty amazing mm -hmm. uh, i'm not a sound healing practitioner but there was a group of women that are part of an organization in south jersey they came up and uh they did the the crystal bowls and things like that. And even in the news, if you read, they use sound waves to remove like blockages in mm -hmm. the heart. Yeah. That's no different. Yeah, <laughs> I, because I started doing that. Uh, I started getting into meditation. And as I started looking up um, guided meditations, because sometimes I felt that I um, couldn't really concentrate. So I looked up guided meditations with positive affirmations. And so... Through that, I also found that there was like sound healing and that there were certain sounds that make you calmer or certain sounds that either open your heart or your throat chakra. And I think those are things that are overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I believe that my that my heart chakra may have been blocked for a while and it could be, you know, certain experiences that cause you to block it. And when your heart chakra is blocked, you basically feel, I, fe I think that you feel resentment very easily mm -hmm. and you feel um, frustrated towards the actions of others very easily. And I think that once your heart chakra opens, you're less judgmental mm -hmm. and less... Um, concerned with the actions of others and more with just being like a loving kind mm -hmm. uh spirit and so um listening to the sound healing uh, that definitely helped me and did some sort of transformation within me and it's just it's sad that so many people can benefit from this but the power of it has kind of been hidden for a long time mm -hmm. so it's like the masses uh the masses will listen to, you know, they, they will go out and like party and like do certain things. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that it's not broadcasted enough that there are other things we can do that really, really help us to just feel better and more powerful throughout day to day mm -hmm. activity. Um, and so I think it's I think what you're doing is just amazing. I think it's so Thank needed. You. Um, I hope that more people, you know, get into your events and go and experience this because it's to me, it's absolutely life changing. Um, and I think that even just somebody who does not suffer from anxiety, who does not suffer from pain or anything like that. Um, you can still benefit from this because you're you may be functioning at this optimal level now, but then by adding these things on, I feel that you will function at an even higher level. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea that they can do Reiki in a hospital. That's 
Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's crazy. And I and you when you when you talked about it, you mentioned energy and transferring, just transferring good energy from the Reiki healer to the patient. And I, and it made me think of, um, you know, sometimes you 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 can exchange a hug with someone, mm-hmm. and depending on who that person is, you can feel a big relief. Mm-hmm. And I've I had a friend who was very spiritual and when I would go through things would give me a hug and it was like um it almost felt like kinetic. It almost felt like I could feel that positive energy being transferred to me mm-hmm. and there was no way for me to voice that and say like you know, like I had no idea how to explain it, but I could feel it and I could feel that love transferring over. And I think that that's important, too, is to know that your energy that you carry, that transfers to others. So if you want uh, the environment around you to be better, you have to give off that good energy because mm-hmm. If you're upset about your environment now and you're giving off that negative energy to those same people you feel affect your positivity and negativity, you're now giving them back what they're giving to you. And it's just energy bouncing Mm -hmm. back and forth. So I talk about this all the time where it's like you have to overpower that with more like having like more loving energy and more kind energy because you can transform someone's negativity um, maybe not in such a high level, like zero to a hundred, mm-hmm. but you can probably ease that person's negativity by not allowing it to rub off on you mm-hmm. and, and and just letting it bounce off and, and things like that. So I think it's really interesting that you brought that up too. And I really did not know that you had all of this, all of like all of these um, alternative options to you know just wellness and health and like i feel like it's an honor to have you here and Mm -hmm. i and i want to thank you so much for coming and um is there anything else that you would like um anyone to know about let's say that they you know they want to work with you or you know they want to contact you what would you say to anybody who may be either nervous about contacting you or doesn't know you know, wants to get their foot in and and learn about CBD or any of the alternative options that you have, what what would you say to them? Um, If you have a question, because if I put something up on online and I'm looking for somebody or something like that, you know, not everything is one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Everybody is unique. Uh, Email me. Mm -hmm. Just email me. You know, you may not hear back right away. You're, you're probably not going to hear back right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, send me a question, no matter what it is. And if I don't address you personally, you'll see that I'll make a video about it along the way. Mm-hmm. And um, just sign up for my newsletter. Go on my website, sign up for my newsletter, follow what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And you'll always know you're going to be getting tips of advice for you know just your life mm-hmm. in general you'll get be getting tips about cannabis products mm-hmm. about cbd products learn about new doctors mm-hmm. that you can try and just the stuff that i'm going through as well so that you know that you're not alone um in this whole process mm-hmm. and um just just reach out to me just mm-hmm. i don't bite like mm-hmm. i'm a patient i'm a person like everybody else mm-hmm. like you know there's videos of me crying on my instagram so mm-hmm. you can see why I need the CBD and, and me using the CBD and you get to see it working. Mm-hmm. So just ask what you want to ask. And if it's something that um, needs something more involved, a, a consultation, um, you, we can book a session together and we can go from there. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, whether it be, um, I do also offer business consultation. Mm-hmm. Um, people can hire me for their services. So if they were interested in getting into CBD or anything like that, I can help them um as well as, like as far as being a distributor um if they're looking more i like to work more with people who are doing ancillary businesses so like what i'm doing is an ancillary business where i'm not working directly with the plant or with a product per se where i'm offering educational services or if somebody wanted to start like a just a t-shirt line or something like that that mm-hmm. was all promo for that like i can help guide them to where they need to go and try to figure out what they want to do in the cannabis space mm-hmm. um so I like to, I just keep it real with people. So mm-hmm. if you're a patient, you need help, you need a recipe, you need whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I 
I wear many, many hats mm -hmm. and I don't mind. It's, you know, it's like coming home when you talk to me. That's why my videos are in my kitchen or in my living room or wherever it is. It's, you know, I'm, I'm home. Yeah. I'm home. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm there with you. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone. And I think that um, just knowing that, you know, just seeing how well you're doing and, and i'm not saying that you don't have moments where you're not feeling well but just knowing that you were able to overcome the majority of the hard part of dealing with fibromyalgia and dealing with everything that you mentioned and and you know it's just seeing you here and glowing and having that strength to go out and do everything that you're doing um, go to these events and just wear all the hats that you wear it proves that what you're doing works because you're the example of what you're educating people on and I think that's very honorable because it's one thing to just say this is good for you but you're not really doing much but to see like you're an example to me that if you take care of your mind body and your spirit because you also talked about that with reiki and everything um that you can overcome some of the things that we may think are defeating sometimes mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah absolutely so i encourage everyone to go to rxmaryjade.com to follow her on instagram which is also rx mary jade that's right <laughs> to go to one of these events i'm definitely gonna have to go i don't care if somebody has to like work one of my shifts for me i have to experience this again it's been like a year and i'm like always itching to like go i'm like when when am i gonna be able to make it <laughs> yeah and um you know i want to thank you all for tuning in and thank you for joining us and i also want to thank um live for beats.com for the background the theme music to the show i want to thank bravery studios for having me and jade and you know providing the just the environment where i can do this show and for those of you who haven't watched this show before just know that i'm doing this show so that eventually i can open a nonprofit organization to help the youth so stay tuned stick with me subscribe like share and um thank you for the support until next time mm -hmm.